give it just a moment to let everybody in from the waiting room. Good afternoon. This is a hearing before the Boston Cannabis Board. Today is Wednesday, July 14th, 2021. Today's hearing is being, is being conducted pursuant to certain temporary amendments to the open meeting law. That is what allows us to meet virtually. This hearing will be recorded and will be posted to the City of Boston's website. Before I review procedural matters, I will introduce Chairwoman Kathleen Joyce. Thank you, Leslie. My name is Kathleen Joyce. I'm Chair of the Licensing Board. And today I am joined by Commissioner John Smith, Commissioner Lisa Holmes, Commissioner Darlene Lombos. And we're not joined today by Commissioner Alejandro Sankian. And I'd also like to take this opportunity to introduce Boston Cannabis Board Project Manager Jasmine Wynn um, and Attorney Chayla White, who does the equity certification for the city. Thank you. And before I re review procedural matters, we do want to say thank you to Patrick Fandel from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, who has been our liaison to the Mayor's Office since the board um, began meeting. Uh, Pat is leaving us and going on to new opportunities, but he has been a tremendous asset. Um, so thank you, Pat, and we will miss you very much. As a reminder, please keep yourself on mute unless you are presenting or testifying before the board. I will call each agenda item in the order it appears on the agenda. I will read it into the record, after which I will ask who is present on behalf of the applicant. You will be given 10 minutes to present. Jasmine Wynn, the project manager, will give you a reminder at the five minute mark and eight minute mark. After the presentation, there will be questions from the chairwoman and the commissioners, followed by public testimony. Public testimony will begin with elected officials and their representatives, followed by the general public. If you have not previously signed up to testify, please do so using the chat function. Each individual who wishes to testify will be given two minutes at which time you will be muted. You can also submit written testimony. The record will remain open until 5 p.m. on Tuesday the 20th and written testimony is given the same amount of weight as spoken testimony. Calling the Cannabis Station LLC, the proposed license premise is 2363 to 2365 Washington Street in Roxbury. This is an application for a recreational cannabis dispensary license with proposed hours of operation, Monday through Sunday, 9 a.m. through 11 p.m. This is an equity applicant. The date of the initial application was September 30th, 2020. The date of filing with inspection of services was October 31st, 2019. The date of the community meeting was June 2nd, 2021. There is a buffer zone conflict with this establishment. Uh, before we turn to the presentation, I will ask attorney Chayla White to testify regarding the equity certification. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I was able to certify the cannabis station um, with the documentation sent to me by uh, Mr. Carlos Castillo, who is the 100% beneficial interest holder of the cannabis state, the cannabis station, uh, which exceeds the 51% ownership threshold set forth in the ordinance to establish an equitable rate, to establish the equitable regulation of the cannabis industry in the city of Boston. Uh, Mr. Castillo met the following criteria. A person who has resided in an area of disproportionate impact as defined by the CCC for at least five of the past 10 years. Mr. Castillo submitted sufficient um, evidence that he has resided in two Boston neighborhoods um, that meet the uh, criteria for areas of disproportionate impact since at least 2014. Um, additionally, Mr. Castillo um, met the criteria of a person who has resided in the city of Boston for at least the past seven years. Again, he submitted sufficient documentation proving that he's been a resident of Boston since at least 2014. And the final criteria that Mr. Castillo met was uh, that he is a person of Black, African-American, Hispanic, Latino, or Asian descent. Mr. Castillo has self-identified as Latino and is of Dominican descent. Are there any questions about the certification or certification process? I have no questions. Okay, thank you. Seeing no questions, who is, pres who is present on behalf of the applicant? Hi, uh, Josh Zakum is here, uh, Caroline Humphrey Clifford on behalf of the applicant, and Carlos Castillo, the applicant and owner, and Shabnan Moshman's Army will be delivering the presentation to the board. All right, give me one moment.
All right, you may begin. Carlos, you're on mute. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board for having us today. Right Time Roxbury, 2363-2365 Washington Street in Roxbury, Mass. Next slide, please. Why are we here? We are offering Roxbury a cannabis dispensary directly in front of Nubian Station, the heart of Nubian Square's commercial district. Our location is on a non-residential strip, three stores down from Silver Slipper, directly across from Arizona Pizza and Bank of America. In addition to being in front of the station, we have secured an exclusive agreement with Mr. Bailey's parking lot and are the only cannabis dispensary that has dedicated parking in Roxbury. Customers can park in Bailey's lot and walk over to our dispensary for free. Next slide, please. Our mission is to revitalize and restore Nubian Square into a destination district. Accomplishing this mission requires building diverse businesses that attract customers from all walks of life. Our business will play a significant role in supporting people and community benefits that will improve the quality of life in the square through our relationships with community partners. Next slide, please. Who we are. I was born in Roxbury and raised in Dorchester. I spent the bulk of my career in real estate and affordable housing. I'm an entrepreneur and I'm the owner of the property where the dispensary will be located. Next slide, please. Ownership structure. Our dispensary will be the first that is 100% owned by someone born in Roxbury. It is the most reflected of the demographics impacted by the war on drugs. We are a Boston equity applicant. We have no investors, no partners. We are accountable to our community and not to shareholders. We own the property and our location will not displace or reduce the current space of a small business in our district. The building was vacant from a previous fire. Next slide, please. This is an aerial view of the location. The red dot is the subject property uh, and right across from it, you can see Nubian Station. Next slide, please. This is a front view of the property that's currently boarded up. The view on the right is a view from the station with your back to the station. Next slide, please. So we have 1200 square feet of basement storage space, 1200 square feet of retail space. Uh, we have a separate entrance and a separate exit uh, just to monitor people coming in and out. Next slide, please. Why is this the best location? We are not near any school zones. We are directly in front of the station. And most importantly, we have parking. Next slide, please. Community and civic engagements. Our track record reflects our community commitment. I've been the treasurer of Roxbury Main Street for over seven years, a board member of Board in Geneva for over seven years. In the past seven years, we've donated to organizations like the Key Verdean Association of Boston, Hope for Children of Haiti, Orchard Gardens, uh, for over eight years, we've participated in the annual holiday party, donating bikes every year and over 6,000 books. Uh, we also donate to the Stepping Stone Foundation, of which I was a scholar. Next slide, please. So we have a proven history of working with Boston. We've been recognized by the mayor's office, Boston police, and the Massachusetts State House for our work and contributions in the community. 2018, our liquor store was rated business of the year. We also received a Boston police certificate of appreciation. And for our work in housing, we received an award from the Massachusetts Black and Latino Legislative Caucus at the State House. Next slide, please. How will the community benefit? We will use 10% of our profits to create a fund to support community organizations in Roxbury and Dorchester, including, but not limited to, Roxbury Main Street, Bowdoin Geneva Main Street, Eglison Main Street, Noah's Advocate, Arts and Cultural Mural Project, Black Men's Group, which supports programs that foster mentorship for men in our community, vice guidance, interview prep. We've already engaged and donated to Cultivate Ed in collaboration with the Urban League and are hiring from within their first graduating class. We are a quarry friendly company. We will hire from within the community as we already do and we'll be working with Malia Lazo to develop the most impactful diversity, equity and inclusion program. Next slide, please. Shabnan, our attorney, will introduce our pathways to home ownership and small business mentorship. We understand the importance of home ownership and small businesses in the community. We have created a home ownership pathway program where, with the assistance of the Main Streets, we'll host three first time home buyer seminars annually. Additionally, we'll cover attorney fees for up to six people per year to assist in closing costs. We have partnered with Marquise, a local broker, to lead the home search. Also, we will establish a small business mentorship program to assist with entity formation 
contract review, landlord tenant lease negotiations for our small businesses and entrepreneurs. Next slide, please. Five minute warning. Elderly services. So we will provide express lane services to the elderly and guided shopping. In collaboration with the residents, we will sponsor two events a year hosted by the Residents Association for the 59 tenants that live a few doors down from our location. Below is a picture of one of the recent events we did at Central Elderly Services. Next slide, please. Transportation and delivery of product. All delivery vehicles will contact our on-site security personnel when they are 30 minutes from arrival. Security will patrol the exterior of the store and the back alleyway. And if there are any identified risks, we'll instruct the vehicle to divert from making the delivery. Delivery routes will be randomized and all deliveries will be video recorded and the recording will retain for 90 days. Next slide, please. Security overview. So the safety and security of our customers, staff and the public are our highest concern. The success of our retail establishment depends on creating a welcoming and safe environment for all who interact with our business. Wendell Delk is our security contractor for this location and will be ensuring the safety of our patrons and residents that are going and coming from our establishment. His security staff will monitor the entire block and help address any issues. With this additional security on our block and in collaboration with MBTA Transit Police, Bank of America Security, we now have four blocks in Nubian Square that are being monitored. We also have a zero tolerance policy for diversion, on-site consumption, loitering within the immediate neighborhood and we'll institute a permanent ban list for any violators. Next slide, please. Protecting you from accessing product. So we're committed to doing everything possible to prevent diversion of product to minors. Security reform will perform on-premise verification of identification for all customers and guests using ID science state-of-the-art technology for secured ID confirmation. It's the same technology used by Massport. Customer's identification will be verified once again at the time of purchase. All products will be in child-resistant packaging. Customers will be provided with education on safe storage and consumption of cannabis products. Next slide, please. Employment plan. We're an equal opportunity employer dedicated to hiring local and diverse talent. We understand that our hiring and personnel policies are a crucial part of attracting retaining and promoting the most qualified individuals with a variety of life experiences. For our employment in overview, we are committed to creating opportunities, not career opportunities, not just a job for Boston residents that includes total compensation that exceeds any living wage standard. Our staff will have access to all our Thank community you. and our pathways to home ownership. We will work with our community organizations, City of Boston's Career Center, Cultivate Ed, and advertise in the Dorchester Reporter and Bay State Banner for recruitment. We're looking to hire between 16 to 20 residents. We're establishing a mentorship program for career development. We're committed to promoting from within. The minimum wage will be no less than $16 per hour. And we have a strong focus on diversity and inclusion. Next slide, please. Two minute warning. Supporters. Everybody in blue are direct abutters or in support. The orange is a subject site and the yellow are in non-opposition. Next slide, please. Elected officials. Support from City Council at Large, Julia Mahir, City Council at Large, Anissa Sabi George, our State Representative Ch China Tyler, our State Representative Liz Miranda, and District 7 City Council in non opposition. Our neighborhood organizations that are in support are Roxbury Path Forward, Orchard Gardens, Cape Verdean Association, Mount Pleasant Forest and Vine Street, and Tommy's Rock. Next slide, please. We have a list here of our abutters that are in support Silver Slipper, Mr. Lee's. Uh, Joe's famous steak. As far as tropical foods, next slide, please. Thank you for your time. This brings us to our Q&A. Thank you very much. Chairwoman Joyce, do you have any questions for the applicant? I do, thanks, Leslie. Uh, thank you for your presentation, Mr. Castillo. Um, because of the buffer zone, I want to uh, get a little more information from you because of the buffer zone conflict. How is this proposal or what your business plan is, how is this different than um, the other ones in the area? How, what disting distinguishes yours? We don't take into, co into consideration things like competition, but public need for yet another um, type of license like this in this neighborhood. So I think we have a lot of community support. We're in a location that's non-residential. 
Um, we have parking. Uh, we will be the least disruptive um, in the neighborhood. And I think people coming on, coming on and off the bus can go directly to the station and not have to walk through a neighborhood to get to a dispensary. So uh, would, you, would you say that this neighborhood could sustain another license like this without any negative impacts in the neighborhood? I believe so. I believe our location uh, will have no negative impact. Okay. Um, I reserve my right for more questions, but that's all I have right now. Thank you. Commissioner Holmes, do you have any questions for the applicant? Pushing the wrong unmute. Yeah. Um, yes, um, I, I'd just like to know a little bit more about um, Delt Security, um, how long they've been in business and what companies have they represented, if they can tell, and just a little bit more about their, their business and their guards. I believe Mr. Delk is, is on the call and if he's, if he's available to unmute and answer, if that's all right with you, uh, Madam oh, Chair. Oh, that's perfect, yep. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Wendell Dell, owner operator of Universal Security LLC. I've been in business for 21 years. Um, I did a great deal of uh, my building of the security company, financial district in the theater district of Royal Albert, um, Club Legos, which is uh, Wonderland Ballroom and also had the pleasure of working with the uh, Democratic National Convention uh, where all of my guards uh, went through secret service and screen. Um, and I'm very community oriented as far as doing security locally at uh, the local clubs that are throughout the area. Um, I was raised in Mattapan, lived in Roxbury, Dorchester for quite some time. And um, I've even done some events with uh, Liz Miranda to help her out in some of her her categories of things she, she did as far as her resume. Um, my guards are crowd controlled, so certified. Um, we go through a rigorous training. And that's a little bit about me. Um, I feel also about the security is that um, to, to make everyone feel a little bit more comfortable is that um, we work with the Boston police and the uh, Bank of America security in that area. Also, we'll be patrolling that area to make sure everybody is safe that's going in and out of the dispensary. Um, not only that, our presence will help deter some of the, you know, unwanted traffic that's in that area. So the uh, residents and the uh, community can feel a lot more safer if they decide to go over there and purchase any of the dispensary items. Our are your, any of your guards licensed um, under 400 or are they special police officers? What are their credentials? None of the guards are licensed under the 400. Um, the company is licensed, bonded, and insured. Um, we have armed guards, um, but we only utilize them in special uh, when, when clients request them. And you are trained through who? Um, I have the, a trainer, uh, the online course that I use. Um, I'll text, I could text that back to you or send you an email on a Yeah, you can, su you can supplement that later. That's fine. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't expect if, you to know it offhand. Yeah, if you, if you can provide the, uh, your email address, I'll send you the course Mr. that I use online. You can just send it to the cannabis board to just attach it to the rest of this application. That's all. Okay. I mean, you can just, okay. just supplement it. I'm just curious to know how your guards were trained. Okay. That, yeah. Thank yeah. you for that. Thank you very much. Commissioner, we'll get you that information uh, shortly. Yeah. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you, guards. Thank you. Commissioner Smith, do you have any questions for the applicant? Yes, Leslie, thank you. Um, Mr. Castillo, this is located near to a um, liquor store, right? Correct? Okay, to the liquor store. Okay. So just checking, have there been any violations outside that liquor store in terms of public drinking and intoxication and loitering? No, we haven't had any violations. We, uh, we went in front of the board many years ago, well, a couple years ago, um, during a time where we were the only ones open. 
Uh, but we know we have we have a good reputation and we can check with B2 and um, uh, Captain- So there hasn't been? Yeah, no, we're, we're in good okay. at the moment. So I know you're saying you're not near the school zones, but you're directly in front of the station, which sort of exposes you to sort of transient population. And there's a lot of young people there. So how are you thinking about, are you going to monitor, I mean, the bus station, the Nubian Square station, which has a lot of traffic, foot traffic, a lot of young people and a lot of transient population. So how are you monitoring? Interestingly the, enough, um, you know, we've been there about eight years or more. Um, and we do not have an issue currently on that block uh, with young people or kids in middle school or anything like that. It's strange enough that they don't tend to walk past uh, the liquor store or even Silver Slipper as much. We don't get a lot of that traffic coming through but, there. But they go to the bus station, right? They do. They do. But there are different, definitely different um, routes. We just thinking about it, you know, even more so. We don't have folks walking past our store to get to the station that much. Young kids, at least. Um, it's mostly adults. We've never had a problem. Even when schools in the area let out, we don't have any kids that are trying to go into the store. We're turning them away. We've never had that issue. And so you're thinking with cannabis, it, you still won't have an issue? No, I think uh, probably the, the biggest benefit is we're going to have security that's not just inside the, the, the dispensary, but one outside of the block. And we think that that's going to be probably one of the biggest impacts on that entire block. So if they're if we have one of when those guys out there walking the block, uh, across the street, Bank of America Security is walking the block, MBTH Transit Police is on is at the station walking that block, and then we also have a security guard at Citizens Bank, then we kind of took four blocks and just put in security um, basically from 9 to 11 or 10 to 11, um, which is going to be a big impact for people coming through there. They're able to feel safer, um, and somebody outside from Universal will be directing people if somebody decides to wait too long outside. I mean, it's a benefit even for our current staff at our store and even for some of Silver Slippers and Mr. Lee's convenience store, because sometimes our challenge is nobody wants to tell the person um, who's, an who's a staff member wants to go outside and say, hey, you got to move across the street. So now if we do get approved and we have security there, we think it'll be a big, big benefit. Mm -hmm. Do you have any online presence? Are you going to sell any of it online and people pick? So we're looking to do pre-orders uh, so that it makes it more convenient for people to order ahead of time. And we're trying to have a station designated just for that. Uh, but really, we're, 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 our plan is to be more of a neighborhood store where it's convenient for you on your way home or, or wherever you're going on and off the bus to be able to stop by and come there. So we, we will have online presence. That's the way the world is going. But we're more community oriented. And, and in that sense, we, don't, we also don't do deliveries from any of our three stores. Are you worried that some of these commuters will buy and then distribute to young people at or around the station at all? So, you know, we, we worry about that even in our package store. And I mm -hmm. think um, the way we've handled it in the past is that our customers know uh, if, if we catch them, we ban them. And I think we have enough of a, of a big presence now in Nubian Square with our package stores that if they get banned from one store, they get banned from all the stores. So I think that becomes also... Um, something where we would have to build relationships with other stores to say, hey, we had an, it, there was an issue that, we, that one of our security guards got, this is the patron, uh, you should ban them as well. So I think you know, if everybody's working collectively, then we'll be pretty effective. But okay. nobody wants to get banned from the most convenient place to them. And in the home, home ownership and small business uh, plan that you have, is it for your clients and your um, staff, so clients and staff? It is for both. The, 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 uh, the priority is obviously staff. Mm -hmm. um, and this really, you know, was born about four years ago um, when, we, when we were looking at what we were doing for our current staff on our real estate side, uh, where we were trying to make sure that everybody that works with us um, is able to get a home. And basically, if I stop construction, which is, you know, the way we're going so we can focus on cannabis and our retail business, that at least everybody that participated or worked with us um, had a home while they were part of our team. And so we basically took that model uh, as a community benefit with everything going on in Roxbury to say, uh, this is really the way that business should go. And, and, and everybody around us has kind of adopted a similar model to believe that home ownership is really the key uh, to fighting gentrification to keep your people in neighborhoods. Uh, so it's something that we strongly believe in. Are you helping with helping with down payments or just attorney fees? 
No, nope, uh, we're not helping with down payment. We basically are, we're doing three first time home buyer classes a year. Right. Uh, we're providing them with a broker. We're both on the real estate side and on the mortgage side. Uh, and we're providing them with in-house counsel. Um, basically six closing a year is what we committed to. Um, and, and, you know, we don't know how this business is going to do. If, um, if we are successful, uh, we can explore, you know, expanding that. But we don't want to make any commitments today that we can't keep forever. There was a large community pushback against the place, the other place we did some weeks ago in Roxbury. That's not too far. What makes you different, you think? Um, I think the biggest diff, there's a lot of differences, um, you know, to, to be frank, but the biggest difference um, is approach and our location. I think a lot of the controversy is that a recent law changed uh, on how you measure the distance from a school. Um, and I think that that's probably, you know, the, the one of the biggest concerns for the community. If you're familiar with the area, uh -huh. um, you know, we are actually in the square and I have two package stores, one in the square and one down the street near the other location. And while they are within walking distance, it is night and day. Our customer in our area, just, you know, five or six blocks from being inside Nubian Square to going down the street to Dearborn is night and day. Um, and, you know, if you're looking at us from a textbook perspective, you might say, okay, close enough, similar demographic, similar income, similar everything. But when you're actually doing business here as a merchant, on the ground level, you know that Nubian Square, everything around the station is very different uh, than when you're down the street at Dearborn, further down Dudley Street. We are, we are unique uh, in, our, in our transit community and people coming on off the bus versus down the street where it's a big residential neighborhood, lots of schools, lots of kids. Uh, we, we don't have that situation here inside the station. I can say that being here eight years and having two stores uh, you know, in the station and down the street. And if I could just add to that, Commissioner, um, you know, as far as community support, and I know you'll hear from elected officials in the community soon, but there's been just overwhelming from the neighborhood associations and local elected officials who know uh, Mr. Castillo and, and have worked with him in the past and, and know this location as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you. Commissioner Lombos, do you have any questions for the applicant? I do. Thank you. And thank you so much for the application. Um, I have a couple questions, one um, centered around employment. Uh, can you say a little bit more about, you had some really high uh, goals around Boston residents, which is really great, 80% it, it looks like. Can you say a little bit more about um, goals around people of color, immigrants, other folks that you have in mind in terms of targeted outreach and recruitment? So, uh, you know, the funny part is when we were joking about this, um, when we were going over this presentation was the, the reality is when I look at in employment and diversity, I think um, I need to hire some white folks because everybody is from Boston, everybody's an immigrant, black or brown. Um, and so I look at diversity with a different lens. Uh, most of our staff at our current stores, uh, hardly any of them have cars. Actually the ones, every time they do buy a car, it's actually pretty cool because they've worked long enough to have been able to save enough to be able to buy a car. So. Um, you can see them progress as they've kept their employment with us. Uh, but I would say right now, everybody that works with me is from Boston. Um, they're, nobody's more than 10, 15 minutes away from the store. Um, so that's uh, our model. And we're right in front of the station so everybody can get to anywhere from Nubian Square. So I think our employment goals are, are realistic. And, and again, I am looking for diversity, but in, in the opposite direction where everybody right now is black and brown. Interesting, thanks so much for that. And can you just say a little bit more about how, what mechanisms you might put in place to ensure that your employees have a voice on the job um, um, for any concerns or protections in particular for your workers? So it, the, the beauty of it is that um, I see everybody personally and the way I operate the stores, even though there are different managers and different people, um, you know, everybody at the end of the day is, is working directly for me. So. I always have the, the approach or attitude, hey, how are you? Um, how's it going? Uh, do you have enough hours? Are things going well? Are you concerned with anything? Um, and, and it be, really becomes like kind of like a family. The folks that you work with, you spend more time with. So you know everybody's name, you know uh, where they live, you know how many kids they have, you know when they're traveling. Um, so I think every, I'm easily accessible. Um, and I think we're gonna you know, keep that. That's been successful for us. 
Thanks. And then just, I might have missed this, but just on the great home ownership um, support that you're trying to do, uh, which is great, had just a, qu a couple questions. I, I might have missed this. On the, the first time home buyers attorney closing support, what is the, the typical cost on that? And I think it says in your application, is it three first time home buyers that you're trying to support? So we're, we're going to do that? three classes uh, every four months. And we're going to work with Marquise. He's been our broker for a while. Um, so we think between him, Onyx Group, and a few other folks that we already currently have a relationship with, that we'll have pretty good outreach. Uh, but also, um, all of our community partners, our neighborhood organizations, they're part of our outreach. So everybody can attend. Um, a typical closing, attorney closing, could range anywhere between $600 to $1,000 for buyer's representation. So that's why we committed to um, a minimum of six. Um, and three classes and hopefully, I mean, I think that that's an aggressive goal. I hope it doesn't become so aggressive, um, but we're basically making commitments that we're gonna be able to meet or exceed. We don't wanna overextend ourselves. Great, okay, thank you so much. Those are my questions. Thank you, are there any other questions from the chairwoman or commissioners? Seeing none, we will turn to public testimony. Is there anyone present who wishes to testify regarding this matter, beginning with elected officials or representatives of elected officials? Hello, this is Jason Gant. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the board. This is Jason Gant. Right Neighborhood Services. Oh. Go, go, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I'd like to go on record in support of this proposal. They've completed a full community process and have been very attentive with reaching back out to the community to answer any questions or concerns. I would just ask that they continue reaching out to the community and maintaining that good relationship that they have already established. Thank you. Thank you. And I see that I believe uh, Councillor Mejia is on. Councillor Mejia? Yes. Thank you to the board chair. I'm here in support of Paulo Castillo and the Right Time Roxbury team, located at 2363 Washington Street. And I am confident that this um, particular establishment will be able to address the issues around cannabis equity here in the city of Boston. And if we're really serious about supporting equity, then um, we will appeal to my appeal in support of Carlos Castillo. Thank you. Thank you. And I believe um, Kevin from Representative Miranda's office. Kevin, are you still present? Kevin may no longer be present. Are there any other elected officials or representatives of elected officials who wish to testify? Right, we will turn to individuals who have signed up. Again, uh, please limit your testimony to two minutes. When I call your name, please state your, uh, if you have not stated your full name, please state your full name and your address and affiliation, if any. Calling Robert George with Roxbury Main Streets. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Robert George, Roxbury Main Streets. Our address is 2343 Washington Street in Roxbury. Roxbury Main Street is a nonprofit commercial revitalization organization work with business, residents, property owners, employees, and public private agencies to improve the mix of goods and services in Nubian Square, Nubian Square Commercial District. To that event, we as a board voted to endorse the cannabis industry because we believe from the research we have done and the information available that this will increase the mix of business in Nubian Square, increase the foot traffic, and bring a new life and vitality to a district that's struggling significantly, especially as we just recovered from um, the pandemic. So in essence, we thank the board for this opportunity to share with you that we endorse the cannabis industry in Nubian Square. Thank you. Thank you very much. Tomas Gonzalez. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak, um, Chairwoman and members of the board. Uh, my name is Tomas Gonzalez. I'm a resident of High Park. I'm one of the owners of Seed in Jamaica Plain. Um, I am going on record in support of Carlos Castillo, understanding that there is a buffer zone conflict. Um, I do believe um, that he could or that neighborhood could support 
two businesses of this nature. Um, he's an amazing young man. Um, I mean, I don't think there's much I need to say. His, he did a great job um, in his presentation. Um, he's been a successful local business owner, um, real estate developer, um, and just an all-around good guy in the community um, for many, many years. Um, so it's an honor to support him, um, and I just want to go on record uh, in doing so. Thank you. Todd Finard. Is Todd Finard present? Yes, uh, I am. And um, just to be very, very brief, my name is Todd Finard. Our office is at 419 Boylston Street. Carlos Castillo is uh, a phenomenal young man who um, I have gotten to know through the cannabis industry and I just wanted to very quickly voice my support for his application and um, that's all I've got. Thank you. Jessica uh, Ben Combs, I apologize if I ruined your name, it's Jessica Present. Lorraine Payne Wheeler. Hi, um, this is Lorraine Payne Wheeler and I'm here today on behalf of Roxbury Path Forward Neighborhood Association. Unlike some of the people have, who have spoken, um, we're, we were really more focused on the business itself. We really like the fact that it is away from schools. We like the fact that it is in the station because people can come on the bus and cross the street and utilize the business. But in addition to that, um, for the people who prefer to come by car, because let's face it, you know, there is an opportunity to um, steal the product or um, uh, steal money from someone that's coming to buy. We really like the fact that he um, was the only business, cannabis business, to be able to secure an agreement for parking. And um, in addition to that, he has sold a regulated product in our neighborhood. And if anything, he improved those stores. And so um, we met uh, with Carlos before the, um, um, when he first uh, began to uh, talk about opening a cannabis business and uh, the neighbors were sub in support of him then. And we continue to be in support of him. So thank you uh, very much. Thank you very much. Calling. Angie Hillier Odate. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I just want to go on record um, in support of Carlos Castillo and Cannabis uh, Station LLC. I've known Carlos since 2000, um, and he's been nothing short of a phenomenal entrepreneur, real estate agent, community organizer, and activist. Uh, so again, just on record in support. Thank you. And just a reminder, when I call your name, uh, please also state your address for the record. Call Sorry about that. I'll do so for, for myself. Angie Pellier of that 2020 Grand Concourse, Bronx, New York. Thank you. Calling uh, Rachel Levy. Is Ms. Levy present? Calling Eric Liebman. Hi, good afternoon. Eric Liebman, Somerville, Mass. Um, in support of Carlos, uh, just so everyone knows, Carlos does operate the package store next door. He's a pillar in the community. Uh, that site can support multiple stores. It's got great accessibility with the bus and parking, and he'll continue to do an outstanding job for the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Victor Chiang. Is Victor present? Tina Payne. Is Tina present? Yes, good afternoon. I'm Tina Payne. I am a good friend of Carlos Castillo. I live at 7 Leo Egan Way in Randolph, Mass, and I am in full support of Carlos. Thank you. Calling Julian Jimenez. Is Julian present? Zach Breaker. Is Zach present? Luis Castillo. Hi, uh, yes, my name is Luis Castillo. I'm a Boston Public Schools teacher, uh, mentor, and entrepreneur. 22 Banfield Ave, Boston, Mass, 02126. I'm, I'm in full support and going on record to support Carlos Castillo. Uh, 
I agree with the executive, uh, the security plan, the housing opportunity, the ownership uh, focus. Uh, it's secure and it's focused on safety. And I think it's important for the economic impact for Nubian Square. Thank you. Thank you. Casey White. Is Casey Hi, good afternoon. This is Casey White. Um, I am from Boston. Uh, I, I don't want to give my address, but it's Boston Mass 021 uh, 26. Uh, I worked for Carlos for many years and just wanted to express my full support um, and also highlight the importance of having the contract for parking, which is one of the biggest concerns in the area. Um, having not just the foot traffic, but also car traffic for people coming out of the area. Um, and I believe that having the contract with the um, with the lot is actually something that's gonna be great and beneficial for um, the business and for the community. So I am in full support of the cannabis station. Thank you. Thank you. Suhey Rosaria. Jeffrey Sanchez. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Thank you, Madam Chair, members and commissioners. Um, I stand in support, 41 Malcolm Road. Um, again, my name is Jeffrey Sanchez and I am a, the majority stakeholder over at Raices on the Hill, over there in Mission Hill, uh, and a lifelong Boston resident. Like, like uh, Carlo Castillo, he is a child of Boston. I've known him his entire life. And if there's any one person that has the ethics, that has the know-how uh, of building business and also doing well in community, it's, it's, it's this young man. He is an example in our community. And I'm so proud of him, of everything that he's accomplished in his life. Um, he, he comes from a very strong family. His parents are Boston public school teachers. And, got, and he is just committed to this community in a very, very profound way, as you can see by all the support that he come up with uh, today, but also in this plan that has so many details and so many, so many things that are, that are uh, investing back into this community in which he loves so much. So thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you. Um, someone under the name Refine and Focus? Yeah, that's uh, Zach Breaker. I'm in Watertown, Mass. I've known Carlos for more than 20 years, we went to Tufts University together. He was a huge um, mentor and leader on campus. He established the Black Men's Group on campus and was uh, very active in bringing people together and resolving disputes and truly uh, treating people in, in the family-like way that he said he runs a business. I fully support him and know him very, very well. And uh, I'm glad to be here, thank you. Thank you. Kathy Kim. Hi, um, Carlos Castillo uh, has been an amazing first and foremost customer of Alpha and Omega for decades. Um, he's an amazing community activist. We've been working very closely through Roxbury Main Streets with Carlos. He's done a lot on the street level. Um, his, again, he's a son of Boston and his family has been uh, friends of ours for decades and we fully support his um, fully support his status with the commission for approval. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Shonda Smart. Hi, good afternoon, uh, board chair. Thank you uh, for this time. I wanna go on record uh, on behalf of Onyx Development LLC uh, in support of Right Time Roxbury. Carlos Castillo is um, a brother of Roxbury. He's a mentor friend. He's um, probably, uh, he's got integrity and um, we fully support his commitment in continuing the conversation around home ownership. And he's led by example, and we are proud, honored, and um, in, fully, in full support of, um, of um, his submission. Thank, Thank you. you. That Candy Diaz has a hand raised. Candy? Hi, good afternoon. My name is Candy Diaz from Dedham, Massachusetts. I have known Carlos for about a decade. I have been working with him for close to three years. And as he mentioned earlier, we he treats us all, all as a big 
family. All of his employees feel very comfortable with him. He's always very personal with all of us. And he's always looking out for all of our well-being. We all feel very comfortable to even come to him for anything. And we are all in full support. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there's someone uh, listed as iPhone with a hand raised, if you want to unmute yourself and state your name for, and address for the record. That must be me with the iPhone. That is you. Uh, Jerry Smart. I'm a longtime Roxbury resident. Um, I live on Moreland Street now. I'm a retired Boston police officer. So I first encountered Carlos um, as I was attending most of the neighborhood meetings uh, around Roxbury. And I found him to be well versed in what's going on in the neighborhood. And I found out that he was the owner of a couple of the liquor establishments. And just from working in the Dudley area, um, I worked around there and I, I found that they were well maintained, uh, they were safe. And uh, it kind of stood out. So after that, me and Carlos have been friends, at least known him for about five years. So I'm, um, I know there's a lot of controversy about uh, uh, cannabis stores, but I tell people get over it. It's a business, they're here to stay. And if anybody's gonna run it good, I think it's Carlos. So I wholeheartedly uh, endorse him. Thank you. Tania Anderson, and again, please state your address for the record. Hi, uh, my name is Tanya Anderson, 40 Schuyler Street, Dorchester. Um, I've, I've known uh, Carlos for a while now and not just a business owner, not just a community member. If you know Carlos, you know that he truly invests in his community. Um, I've seen him uh, in the way, in, in just his philanthropic efforts to support the community in various efforts, but also just um, giving, even when people are not watching and just uh, completely altruistic and about helping his community. I think he is uh, sincere, a wonderful um, business uh, example to our community. And I would love to see him have the opportunity to um, thrive or, uh, <laughs> have more success in his uh, business ed endeavors. Thank you very much. Are there any other individuals who have not previously testified who wish to testify? Right, seeing no one, as a reminder, the record will remain open until Tuesday, the, oh, I'm sorry, Arvin Isabel? Yes, thank you. Uh, my name is Arvin, I live in Weymouth, Weymouth Massachusetts. And I have known Carlos for 15 years, about 15, 16 years. And I can tell you that he is an amazing person and a great businessman. And I'm in full support of his new project. I know he will be successful. Thank you very much. Any other individuals? All right, seeing none, uh, the board will take this matter under advisement. This will be, the record will be kept open until Tuesday at 5 p.m. We will reconvene on Wednesday. Uh, on Wednesday, in addition to this item, we will also be considering the, under old and new business, the proposed amendment to delivery. That is all that is before the board today. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you.